Thank you for being so here and, and uh, letting me show you my art quilts. And, and I'm actually going to demonstrate how uh, my accidental landscape and my happy villages go together. Um, you might be surprised if I told you that when I made my first quilt, I didn't know how to sew. I had to get the instruction book let out from my sewing machine on how to thread the machine. I had no idea. But I had taken art lessons since I was six years old, and so I figured, I can draw. How hard can this quilting stuff be? <coughs> and so that was 30 years ago. So I taught myself how to sew in order to make my first quilt. Now before I start, I'm going to just go over some just a basic definition, and I might throw out some things that you don't know what I'm talking about. I might use a term that you don't understand. We'll just save those questions for later, and then I can explain them. But a quilt, just the basics, is the quilt top. That's the part you see. Sometimes it's just one piece of fabric, like this is a piece that I've hand painted. It might be pieced, or some of you know it as a patchwork, or it's patched, or it could be appliqued, but that's the part you see. And then underneath is the part you don't see. This is batting. This is cotton batting. That's what I like to use for my wall quilts because it hangs nice and flat. Mm -hmm. If I were making a bed quilt, I wouldn't want that. I want something nice and fluffy. So that's what's in between that you don't see. And then the very underneath part is the an another piece of fabric. Um, that would be the right side, wrong side there. And what makes it a quilt? The stitching. It can be hand stitching or it can be mis machine stitching. But that's what officially makes it a quilt because that holds all three of these layers together. Um, you will see a lot of this kind of fabric in my landscapes and my happy villages because that's what I like to do. It's, it's painting um, with a sun sensitive fabric in color tissue paper. But that's a whole other workshop. <laughs> <laughs> so when I taught myself how to sew, I really, I didn't like to do anything that was normal. It had to be out of the box. It had to be a curves. It had to be something that had the illusion of movement. And so for 10 years or so, I did what was traditionally called curve piecing, so templates. And it took a lot of time to do it, very labor intensive. And after the 10 years of doing that, I said, you know, this is my hobby, and this is not fun. <laughs> I want to have fun. And so I said to myself, that's very dangerous, what if I just took my rotary cutter, and this is the pizza cutter of the quilting world. It's a round rotary blade, very dangerous, <clears throat> we all have scars to prove it. <laughs> um, I would take my cutting mat, and I have a cutting mat, it's self-healing, that's so big, and I would just undo that blade and just cut curves, whatever felt good to me. And then I would iron those edges under, and I would top stitch them together, and I would create a whole bunch of these kind of things. I call these a wavelength. And I would make some that were water, and some that were sand, and just a whole bunch of things like that. And most of the times they went together to create something very abstract, okay? After a while, I was teaching this, and at the end of a class, we'd be, you know, making these waves for six hours. We'd hold the, <laughs> we'd be like, yeah, anyway. <laughs> so anyway, so we put the, our fabric so that the lines were oriented horizontally. And I just wanna fold this so I can hold it up and show you. And what happened was, all of a sudden, oh. we got an accidental landscape. Mm -hmm. Even have an accidental moon or a sun in there. Not planned. And that's, what ha that's how they started. Now that could be that way. It looks mighty fine that way too. I mean, that's not your typical color for a river, um, but it looks like a river, that yellow-orange river running through there. So I started making a whole bunch of these landscapes, and I'd bring them to a lecture like this at a guild, and I'd say, this is what you can do with my top stitching technique. And then everybody said, well, where's the pattern? I said, they're accidental. I have no idea how I did this. And so I was on Long Island, and that's the extent of my Long Island accent. They said, Karen, you have to do a pattern for that. I said, I can. She said, 
if I said, could I write the guidelines? And they said, yes, you should. And so I did. I accidentally got into writing patterns, okay? Um, so I have a whole series of these patterns. And the point is, it's the hardest thing I ever did. I had to figure out the colors, the proportions, the values, the measurements, etc., so that when I tell each and every one of you to cut a curve, because it's all going to be different, that it's going to work. Mm -hmm. And it does, because I've been teaching this for 14 years, and everybody does fine. So this is your first little lesson, or the, the first demo. Um, I think it, it, this is the most fun to do, the, uh, the beach scene. It, it just break it down into sky. I'm going to do three strips of water and 11 strips of sand. You say, why 11? Trust me, it's just a good proportion. <laughs> so this is how it starts. It's have a nice little piece of sky fabric. This is what I call a commercial fabric. The clouds are already printed on there. A lot of times, um, on this one, I'll paint my own fabric. That's fun to do too. Alrighty, and so the first thing that goes down is our dark water strip. Now the water are all cut. They're the same width as the sky, but they're two inch strips. So they have, a, actually the horizon line is straight. I get seasick, so I want that line to be straight, and it should be straight anyway. So if that goes down, it just covers that bottom raw edge of the sky. Then my other ones, they have just a very little bit of of, of curve there, and all you can see the back edge is ironed under, so it's no raw edge. And so the next, let's see, how about if I go like this? That way everybody can see better. And I'm going to put that real close like that. I'm going to put the next one down like so. Then I'm going to add one of these fell down. Oh, yes. Oh, that's a future island. <laughs> okay. So let me get my pieces there. Okay, that's fine. So I have all my sand fabrics there cut. They're a little deeper. They're four inches. And the only thing I'm doing as far as perspective is normally if you look at a landscape, you have dark in the foreground and it gets lighter and grayer in the background. In this beach scene, once you learn a rule in my class, you break it right away. So we're going to do it the opposite. We're going to have the light source here in the foreground and it's going to get uh, darker as it gets to the wetter, darker sand. Okay, that's our thinking there. Okay, so let's just pick one of these up. Like so. Like so. And we're, we can do them left or right, we can angle them. I'm just going to do it really quickly here. So, it's best if you talk to somebody while you're doing that. <laughs> <laughs> that way you don't think about it too much. Because when we think, we get in trouble. <laughs> and that is actually how quickly it goes up. Like so. Actually, here's one that's that's um, actually uh, I would put a mat around there. It doesn't take any longer than that to put it together. And once it's pinned, I mean, once you have it like that, you know what everybody does? You take it apart at least. 10, 20 more times. The thing is you have to just say, it's fine that way, and then you pin it. You do something like this, okay? Mm -hmm. So everything's all together. It's like a magician time. Everything is pinned, okay? Not accidental pinning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you top stitch it. So all the, then uh, this is the time that you're using your sewing machine. And the only thing that you cut away is some things back here underneath, okay? And then, you square it up, and then you decide to add details, whether you add a beach uh, dune fence or a sailboat and, uh, or other things like that. Let me just do one other, just another variation to show you. Um, you could do something like this. You could add a distant island there, okay? And then you could put our strip there. We could even have a little bit of lace in there. 
go forward. <laughs> <laughs> and then again, and then I'm going to break the rule. I'm just going to pick these up in any old order because I said I could. We could break the rule, although I like a little more contrast. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to just. It's going to be big dunes. Okay, we're just going to go really crazy here. You see, it's really hard, really, really difficult. <laughs> Are you catching that drift? <laughs> it's really playtime. And you see why I still have such fun with it. How are they all sticking like that? It's just cotton sticking to cotton. They just, they just stays that way. <laughs> Is it hard to iron down the curves so that they're not? Not really, because you've got the concave, you've got the, the bias of the fabric working with you. Okay, so there we could also put a lighthouse on something like that. Let's see, here's one at the bottom. I'll show you just a couple variations, because once you know the basic scene, it's just a matter of changing the colors. Um, so here we changed it, we made it horizontal. That's a typical landscape um, format. And we put a, a lighthouse on. So same basic idea, just different proportions. Something smaller. Here we have a, a low horizon instead of a high horizon. It's one of my painted fabrics. And just doing the sea oats and a little um, seagull in there. This is our daughter, what is it, 32 years ago, Walter, when she was cute, two-year-old on the beach. I'm taking a photo transfer and putting that onto your um, scene. And these are actually shells that we collected on the beach. We used to go to Virgin Gorda in the British Virgin Islands. And here you can add some beach grass, um, an umbrella, beach chairs, just try to personalize it. This is these two are kind of what I call my accidental accidental landscapes. When I've made a couple landscapes, I have all these strips laying um, left over. So I can't throw them away, can I? Mm -hmm. So you throw them together and they get a little life of their own and I think they're almost cuter than whatever I started out with. Smaller gets cuter and cuter. So that's kind of a synopsis of our our accidental landscapes and something very different, but just as playful, are the happy villages. Ah, this is what I was looking for later, because when you, when you do the scene, and you really didn't see it, and I'm sorry, because I had it so well organized up there, once you put the mat on there, that's the ta-da. You really can see what you have. Better late than never. Okay, so happy villages. Here's a happy village. Okay, and oh, there's a happy village. Those are they're they start out as squares, okay, and then I cut those squares into these silly little shapes. I never it was like the landscapes. I didn't mean to ever do landscapes. I never meant to make a village either. Um, they were leftover shapes from something. And long story short, they turned into villages, and I've just gotten addicted to making them. So what happens is we cut them into the shapes. That's not a, uh, an accident at all. And then we make a mess. It's like if you remember color forms when you were a kid. Mm -hmm. yeah. This doesn't look like a village, right? It's not mm -hmm. supposed to. Okay. And when I teach this class, this is the hardest part of the class because everybody starts to whine. This is stupid. It doesn't look like a village. It's okay. It will. I promise you it will. So what happens is our contractor has limited knowledge and he or she only knows how to do half circles, trapezoids, and some triangles for rooftops. So here we've taken that mess, okay, and we've started to add rooftops, all right? And then, once you do that, then you start to add windows and steps, and then, then you get to the point where it's got to be all glued, and then you put tool on. But another version of that, and we'll actually do one together, 
is I always highly recommend that you add some sky and some water because then you have less real estate to deal with. <laughs> and your village is done a lot quicker and then I have happier students, okay? So let's show you how something like that would, would happen. So that's, that's what we're gonna work on this afternoon. Work, I shouldn't use the word work. If it's, it's, it should be play. What happens with this is it's something, we're not gonna go this far, but this would be the same thing, just taking it a step further, pun intended. And I make sure that I know where my quilt stores are in my library and all. <laughs> That's important. So, let's see, okay. I should mention while I'm, I am at this step, I use uh, this fabric glue. It dries clear, it washes out. If I were to wash these, they're not meant to be washed. Um, it comes out in a little tiny dot and I can just slide things under here like that, press and glue, so I don't have glue all over my fingers. Um, so that just holds this in place. That's just lightly held there. Now, where do I put a rooftop? Any, any of those horizontal lines would be a prime candidate for that. So I'm gonna, I just kind of pre-cut some of these so you didn't have to sit, sit there and watch me do all that. And so if I put long, handle tweezers come in handy for this. We've almost got a castle already. Isn't that cool? <laughs> now, there was a sale on these striped rooftops, so <laughs> the people on location, location, the people on the beach, they have the cool, very cool um, rooftops here. So we've got some triangles, we've got a trapezoid. I think this is my observatory up here. Here's a half circle. Um, or it could be a museum, I don't know. Um, take this one, I'm just, I'm just going to put a couple rooftops on just so you can see what I'm up to here. Sometimes people can't um, decide on the color of you know the house, so this is a duplex, so we put a roof over the lavender and the yellow. That's okay. We, we can do whatever we want. Are those pieces ironed under? No, these are all raw edge, so that's different than, than accidental landscape. Oh, a random window. <laughs> okay, maybe a couple more rooftops, but you're getting the idea, right? All of a sudden, something that didn't look like a village is starting to look like a village. So now it's time maybe to put a couple windows in, or how about a clock? We're going to make this into a clock tower. That looks good. <laughs> And maybe we'll do a couple more of those. Oh, wow, oh, these are fun. They either call these the Roman aqueduct or the, the bridge that gets us to our private island over here. You can have something like that. Or I kind of like to have it as a pier mm -hmm. where it comes in and maybe that's a really cool restaurant and we can sit out there. <laughs> and once you cut one of those, you have all these little leftover Jesus. <laughs> so you just can't throw anything away. So we'll just start picking those up and put them there and put this here. <coughs> See, now my hiking friends knew, know what I'm doing when I'm not on the trail with you. <laughs> She's cutting the fabric. And maybe we'll have a couple of other different colors here. They've got their lights on. <laughs> They're reading. <laughs> well oh, here I've got a library sign. I think that's the library. And all these buildings, we can't get into them. We better make sure we have a door. It doesn't help if you don't have a door. I'll stop soon. I always, I just get carried away. And I just keep playing and playing. Get a little awning. And then. We would continue with that, and I'm, I was doing like super fast. We can start to plant trees, and what we, where we put the trees is any place you don't like. So, I don't like, that's a funny little place there. And so then we just start to plant some trees. And we can do palm trees, we can do just these little evergreens, which are fun. That's a funny little shape there, we'll just cover that. <laughs> It's very scientific. <laughs> okay? And that is how the village would put
progress, okay? So once you get it to that stage, of course you would have to glue it, but I'm gonna show you the addition different color tool on there. So this one is the one that's ready for that. And what is tool? Tool is this fine, fine netting, like brideswear, okay? They, it comes in any color you can imagine. And so that <coughs> goes over the whole piece. And the right color is the one that you don't know is there, okay? This one has a little shimmer to it. And if anything, I think it dulls it a bit. Don't you think from there? Mm -hmm. It's okay if you say yes or no. I think it dulls it. <coughs> so let's just try, I have a blue one. That was a like a lavender. Now oh, from wow. here, oh, I think that's a pretty good one. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Makes sense mm -hmm. okay. that, that, would, that would be a contender. Let's try, just for fun, let's try a red one. And you know what's going to happen? It's going to change the time of day. Yeah. It, it mixes the ouch. <laughs> the, the red mixes with the blue, gets purple sky. It, it softens the yellow, come, becomes more orange. And so it's a totally different type of day. Um, there isn't a right or wrong. It's just whatever one you like. It's like a sunset. Uh, when I mm -hmm. first started teaching this, I taught at a quilt store in Virginia. Quilt stores don't usually carry this, mm -hmm. and the owner was so excited. I have black tool for you and white tool, and I thought, well, this this class is going to be ruined. But what happened is we realized black is mighty cool too. Mm -hmm. It pops the colors totally. Mm -hmm. It dulls the yellows a lot, and it makes it a little bit more stormy. Um, but otherwise, it really pops it. So once you decide, um, then that's when the sewing machine comes in. And some people just don't want to do it. Um, kids in, uh, <coughs> in New Zealand, um, the teacher taught it in construction paper and glue. Um, you could do this, and um, it's called a fusible. You've got iron-on fusible. You iron it on and frame it. So you don't have to know how to sew in order to do that. So it's, it's just, I'd say everything that I do is really like an adult kindergarten class. <laughs> Why not? We should have fun. As adults, we just forget that we're, we're artists. So here's a comparison. This one has lavender tool. This has black. They're both the same color palette, but they look different. Wow. Mm -hmm. And again, one isn't right or wrong, it's just whatever you like. And then you can see the quilting. This is simple quilting, that's something I could do in an hour, just outline quilting that holds everything together. Or this is where I put the bricks and the mortar and okay, the bricks and stones and the shingles and everything is, is quilted on that. Here are a couple other variations. Here's the one, a more Italy-inspired Cinque Terre area. And what do you have on that one? This one has probably a medium blue. And here, this one was actually an Austrian village, I think was inspired, but it can be anywhere you want it to be. And you can put uh, photographs in your village, just like I did with the landscapes. This one has a uh, in, um, photo transfer from Regensburg that my husband Walter took, and then making the villa, building your village around that. So you have a little realism, a little perspective, and the rest is wonky. It's just supposed to be nothing straight, um, just very childlike. Speaking of childlike, the sillier you, you are with this, or the sillier I am anyway, the more fun you have. Uh, so this was fun. You know, a witch's hat for a rooftop? Well, yeah, why not? Um, pumpkins Pumpkin. and jack-o'-lanterns for eyeballs and, and doors and that kind of thing. So you can see I don't take myself too seriously. Uh, it was a year or so ago we lost power for a couple days and I had to do something, so I did a mini, mini, mini oh, village. No. <laughs> I had to get my hiking uh, headlamp out to, to see what I was doing. So that was the same shapes that you saw, the big ones, but only I started with a two-inch square. My husband's, are you nuts? <laughs> but it was fun. So that's Miniville, or it's five o'clock somewhere. It's even got our two kayaks there, yellow and blue. <laughs> so that's how my villages and landscapes go together. My other pieces 
uh, like the, uh, this is the same technique, the layer top stitching. So that's more the abstract work that I do. Most of my work is this size and more abstract, uh, but I'll use that fabric also in wearables too. And, and then this is a bigger village that we've already talked about. So I'll answer any questions and then you're, you know, I'm excited for you to, to see all my pieces out there. And again, it's just a sampling. It's a small sampling of over 30 years of work. I think I, think oh. I must have at least 300 uh, pieces. So any questions? I think you've answered it already, but you actually use photographs. And is that a photograph in the background, the mountain there with the, or is that cloth? Yeah, this that. is cloth. No, not, not the sky. Yeah, that. It, it's just a cloth, that a piece of fabric. Too. Yeah. Right. yeah Buying the fabrics is, is yeah. half the fun of this, or, yeah. or painting it. Yeah. yeah. When, you paint, when you say you paint, you paint it with acrylic, you paint it with... I'm painting with, it's, it's Seta Color by Pibeo, and it's a sun-sensitive water-based paint. So if I painted with blue uh, paint yesterday, you wouldn't still see it on my hands because it washes off. Which is my... Mm -hmm. What kind of batting do you use? A, a cotton batting, the hundred percent, or a cotton bamboo for wall hangings, because you want it to be straight like that, nice and flat. I'm curious about the sewing part of it. Um, are you going around the edge? Are you going to, to do like an abstract pattern over um, what I you're think doing? You can, I can do really simple like that, just outlining the shapes. Or, let's see, can you see it more on this one? Mm -hmm. You can see I've done swirlies <coughs> and circles. I've, I've done stonework. Um, on the big pieces I quilt like to and death. <laughs> and that's all machine. That's no, all machine and it's called free motion quilting. Um, if, if you're not a sewer and even, if, I think you can imagine the machine, if you feed your fabric in, mm -hmm. it will sew a line. If you disengage the mechanism that makes it feed, mm -hmm. it's free. So I, I just do this kind of thing. And so I'm basically drawing with the needle and thread. And that's what I like to do, because I like to draw. Um, are they all straight stitch and not zigzag? I was just saying, it's free motion. OK, so you're okay. I'm just doodling. I, I'm a big doodler. You'll see up, yeah, you'll see it. And this is doodling, and, and uh, you can't see. If you're smart, even professionals, you put a busy vacuum on, <laughs> so if I make a mistake, <laughs> it happens, the phone rings. <laughs> or my daughter texts me, who knows. Um, but yeah, it's all the freeform mm -hmm. machine quilting. What color thread do you use? How do you decide on which color that will stand out? Uh, well, sometimes I want it to stand out. It depends whether I want it to blend or contrast. Like here, I wanted <coughs> red thread against the yellow to contrast. So you're changing. I'm the changing. All the time. Oh. But there's some threads that change color that's called variegated thread. Mm -hmm. So you will those. Yeah, mm -hmm. which is kind of neat. Do you ever put the tool over the landscapes? No, because there's there isn't any reason to okay. because they're secured. We, yeah, the edges are all these edges are already turned okay. under um, in the landscapes. So, um, yeah, so the only the tool is just holding those raw edges so they don't fray more. Oh, okay. yeah. And you sew on top of the tool. And you sew on top of the tool, so all that quilting goes through that. And you don't catch. No, it actually makes it easier. The tool makes it's it a nice better. smooth mm -hmm. sewing surface. But you glue each piece. Yeah, just a little bit, just a little bit. Any other questions? Yeah. So help yourself. There's um, the, the uh, little programs are up here. I've got a book if you want to see other things that I've done back to 1995, a, a quilt that I did for Bedford Village Elementary School. <laughs> There's all sorts of stuff in there, and, and the books are there. And the quilts are there <coughs> waiting, and we've got some wine and, and goodies. Are you yes. teaching any workshops locally? I'm doing a Random Roses, which is that, up in um, Quilted View in New Hartford next Sunday. And I think there's room. <laughs> I highly recommend to you to take a workshop with her. She makes it very accessible and very easy and oh, fun. Did I tell you enough to say that? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. 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 Alrighty, thank you.